you'd like to find out how you can become a best-selling author? Well, today we're going to find out, thanks to my guest, New York Times best-selling author, Peggy McCall. Thank you so much, Peggy, for being on the show today. Always my pleasure to serve. Thanks for having me. Well, Peggy, and I'm actually going to have to read this because, honestly, your pedigree is uh, so amazing and very impressive. So, you've written seven books. They've been trying... Eight books, eight books. Yes. They've been translated in over 30 languages, sold in over 80 countries. Okay, how do you get from that point in your life? First off, let's start with that first book. How did you even get that first book to become a best selling book? <laughs> well, it's, you know, there's definitely a commitment involved. And I think it really starts with having a decision that that's what you want as far as an outcome. And, you know, I really feel blessed that in my career that I've studied personal development, you know, so extensively because it is a really important part of achieving anything. You know, for athletes, we see it, for actors, for authors. And so, you know, I knew that what was fundamentally necessary for me to achieve bestseller with my books was to set a clear intention and to stay focused on that intention and do whatever was required in order to make my books bestsellers. And at the same time, and this may sound a little odd, but it, it's a matter of detaching yourself from the outcome. And I think that's where some people get really confused because what happens is if there's an unhealthy attachment to an outcome, then what happens is it actually pushes the desire away. And so if you have a desire to be a best-selling author and you pursue it, you, know, you find out what's required in order to make that happen and you follow through and uh, let's say it doesn't happen, just don't allow it to have you spiral down. Don't allow it to, to impact you in a negative way because sometimes the book that you're trying to get on the bestseller list, you know, maybe it's just not going to happen at that time. Maybe you needed to do a little bit of extra. And so go again, you know, try again. See, the thing that I've also learned is that if we can find people that have achieved that which we want to achieve and model them, learn from them, what did they do, and then model them, what we're going to do is we're going to shave off potentially years of our time and save ourselves thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars and learn from what they've done so that we can just model it, repeat it, right? It's like a formula for success if we just watch what other people have done. And so when I started, you know, with my very first book, and, and here's a copy of it here, it was a hardcover edition of a book called On Being, The Creator of Your Destiny. And I self-published this book and I printed 3,000 copies of this book and I had them delivered to my house and sitting in my dining room. You see, when I wrote this book and I had a desire to share the message from the book with people in the world, but I didn't know how to market it. Okay. And that's, that, that's where the, the real challenge was. I had to learn how to market my book. Now, the other part of that is I had the desire to get the book out there in the world, but I didn't have the desire to be traveling and all over the world and, and vacant from my son's life. At the time I wrote that book, I was a single mom. So my desire was to be successful, but take care of my priority, which was my son. So be a successful stay-at-home mom. And that's actually what I did. I found you know, a method of marketing using the internet. And I started marketing my books. Then I started marketing courses. Then I started marketing other books, other programs, services, and, and teaching people how to do it. And it just took off, absolutely took off. And I've been enjoying a wonderful, successful career in business. Now I have the eight books, been on the New York Times bestseller list. My books are now in 31 languages. I've got some copies. I have a shelf here with copies in my books. I can't read this one, obviously. I'm not even sure. I think it's Japanese. I'm not sure. <laughs> a copy of that. I've got another copy here. I've got multiple copies on my bookshelf. Uh, I think this is German. Again, not sure. <laughs> Don't speak the languages. But I have multiple copies of my books in many different languages from around the world, all from marketing on the internet, from the comfort of my home. See, that's amazing. There are a couple of things that I just picked up from what you just said. One is a you're a single mom. So this is really important because there I'm sure there are women watching this and thinking, well, you know what, I, it can't be done for me. It could be done maybe for Peggy, but not for me because I have children, I have responsibilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just said that you actually were a single mom, you had a son, so you had responsibilities. The other thing as well is you just 
broke down one of the myths when, you know, you think, well, if, if I want to do this, that means I have to travel all over the place, it's going to be expensive, yada, yada, yada. You actually broke down a number of myths that actually could potentially be stopping a lot of people watching this interview right now right. thinking, well, I can't do it. And it's interesting right. that you said that it all starts from personal development and setting very clear intentions. Oh, you know, it really doesn't. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I don't even think like that, you know, that, that people might be thinking, oh, I can't do it. Well, Peggy did it. I can't do it. Uh, and I've got to tell you, I have a grade 12 education. I do not have a formal education. You know, sometimes people will tell me, well, what's your degree in? Yeah. Or do you have multiple degrees? Are you a peach? It's like, no, you know, my degrees in life, my, and anybody can learn this stuff. Also, I'm not technically inclined. Okay. I'm really not. I, mean, I have to get my son to help me figure out how to, you know, PBR the, you know, American Idol. <laughs> well, maybe not quite that bad, but I'm not. And it's it's not that complicated. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Another thing that's, I think, really important to mention is that when I started marketing my book online, at that time, I was actually in pretty serious debt. Now, I know how to attract money to me. I've done it. I've done really well in my career. But what had happened was, Financially, I started to spiral down. Now, here's the thing. I was pursuing my passion. I was absolutely hell-bent, you know, I'll use that word, hell-bent on, you know, getting my book out there in the world. But ignorance is the state that I was in. And ignorance is not bliss. You know, some people think ignorance is bliss. It's not bliss. It's Ignorance can destroy your life. I mean, it can destroy you financially. And where I was ignorant is understanding that as an author, when you write the book, 5% of your job, 5% of your job is done. 95% of the job is marketing the book. And, you know, I had that realization. It was like a wake up call, you know, after I had already published my book. And, you know, this is a hardcover book, right? These yeah. aren't cheap. This is a, you know, it's a hardcover bound, you know, it's got Absolutely. the gold embossed, you know, the quality of the papers there. It's, that's not cheap to produce. Absolutely. And so, but it, time I had that book, you know, I was, it was in serious debt, but I pulled myself out relatively fast. 